It's 2024, and yes, this will be a year of shakings, but it's also going to be a year in which God does some awesome things. Many of us are going to find ourselves laughing for joy this year, and that is the subject of this week's weekly word of prophetic encouragement. 2024 is a year that you can look forward to with anticipation. My name is Arlene Westerhoff, and welcome to my weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Now, as we have entered the new year, it is so crucial that you know what the Lord is saying, that you know what the armies of the Lord are doing so that you can't just align yourself with it, but also so that you can move forward in your destiny. If you are in Europe or the Amsterdam or Netherlands area, then I'd like to invite you Saturday, the 13th of January, we have our annual Get Ready for 2024 conference. Now, this conference will give you not just the prophetic word of the Lord, but also the apostolic word of the Lord. I heard a statement recently, and I love it, and it says that apost or sorry, prophets get revelation but apostles make it happen. And so I'll be sharing my prophetic word of the Lord, the European prophetic council's word. I'll also be commenting on the apostolic council of prophetic elders word for 2024. As we look at prophetic words, it's so important to put them into context. I'll see also what happened with the words last year, what came to pass, what are we still waiting on? And my husband, Dick Westerhoff, he will bring the apostolic word of the Lord for this coming year so that you can not just get revelation, but so that you can also build with the revelation from heaven. So that's Saturday, the 13th of January. And then we have something exciting. It's just come in. We have gotten confirmation from Chuck Pierce that he will be able to be with us on Tuesday evening, the 16th of January, here in the Dominion Center in Amsterdam. For more information about both of these meetings, you can go to my website, arlenewesterhoff.com, or you can go to the Coalition of Apostolic Reformation website. And that is something that uh, I will be sending through and putting on my website. Now, as we enter this year, I said, you know, this is a year in which many of us are going to find ourselves laughing. And some of you are listening and thinking, how on earth is that possible with all of the stuff that is going on? Well, this year is going to be a year in which we laugh, but in which the Lord laughs. This is going to be a year in which we see the King of glory literally laughing at his enemies. And it says in Psalm chapter 2, which is really a very, very important messianic psalm for our times, but in Psalm chapter 2, the Lord God, the Father God, is speaking to his Son, and he says in chapter 2, verse 4, he who sits in heaven's in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. And then he will speak to them in his wrath and distress them with his deep displeasure. Actually, what's this talking about? It's talking about the rulers in the world, but also these demonically empowered rulers who are saying, let us break their bonds in pieces. Let us cast their cords away from us. Essentially, let us break away from the Lord our God and from his statutes and let us just do our own thing. It says that the Lord in heaven will laugh. And so God, this is a year, even though it's going to be a year of great shakings, God himself will laugh. And when God laughs, then we also get to laugh. In this year, God will laugh. Why? Because the nations belong to him. And as watchmen prophets start to stand 
on the walls as watchers in their nations, God is going to laugh. Psalm 24 it talks about the earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. And actually that is what we're going to see this year. You know, it's just nations are going to be turning to the Lord this year. And so this is an awesome thing, but what does it have to do with you and with me? Well, first of all, the Lord is saying that 2024 is going to be a year in which you will laugh for joy. There are going to be unexpected answers to prayers that you've been praying for a long time. And even as I say that, I need to think about the story of Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 18. Abraham and Sarah, they were in their tents. It was a hot day, the middle of the day. And all of a sudden, they get a visit from three men who are unknown to them. But Abraham was used to practicing hospitality. And so he invited these men in. And while they were there, one of the men who was actually the angel of the Lord, that's generally accepted to be an Old Testament manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But one of these men said to him, you know, it's just, you know, by this time next year, you and your wife will be holding a son. By this time next year, you and your wife will be holding a son. That's awesome. The Lord is saying to all of us, as we host the presence of God this year in our services, also in our own personal times with him, and when I talk about hosting the presence of God, I don't just mean your quiet time, even though that's really, really important, but I mean just taking time to be with him, to be still, to allow his presence to saturate your very being. Many of us are going to find this year that as we do that, as we take the time to do that, that God is going to break for example, a curse of unfruitfulness over our lives. In Abraham and Sarah's case, it was a case of un or physical unfruitfulness, a lack of fertility. And for those of you who are listening today and who are suffering from that, you know, who want children, who have been trying for a long time, I speak it out now in the name of Jesus that this year, 2024, God is on the move for you. And I break now that curse of infertility on your life, physical infertility, so that you can't get pregnant or that prevents you from carrying children full term. I just break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Also, every curse of spiritual infertility. When I say that, you know, it's just those of you who know the calling of God on your lives, even on your generations, but you have not been able to enter in. There's always something that slams in your face. In the name of Jesus, I come against that in the mighty name of the Lord most Hi, and I say that curse of infertility over you is broken in the name of Jesus. And I say now that everything that had been placed in your way to hinder you in walking in the call of God on your life, that I, those things I command to move aside now in Jesus' name. But you know what? In this story, in Genesis chapter 18, you know, these men, they say, to Sarah, you know, in uh, chapter 18, verse 10 of Genesis, I will certainly record, return to you according to the time of life next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Now there's a kind of laughing that we make to, need to be sure that we're not going to do. And that was the kind that Sarah did at the second half of verse 10. Sarah was listening in the door of the tent, which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in age. Sarah was way past childbearing. And in verse 12, it says, Sarah laughed within herself and said, 
after I've grown old, shall I have the pleasure, my Lord, of being, and my Lord being also old, you know, shall I have the pleasure of bearing children? Now, that was what Sarah said. However, the Lord's proclamation over her was very, very different. And so we know the story. A year later, Sarah gave birth to a son, Isaac. And when she gave birth, Abraham and Sarah named this son Isaac, which means he laughs. And so this is going to be a year in which we don't laugh out of unbelief, which was what Sarah was doing, but we laugh because we're going to see God answer the prayers of decades. Many of you who have been waiting on certain prophetic words to be fulfilled in your lives for decades, you are going to see them break open now in the name of Jesus. And so as we enter this year, 2024, the Lord wants to encourage you by letting you know that this is going to be a year in which you are going to see him move on your behalf in an awesome, awesome way. And so I just bless you with that now in the name of Jesus. And one of the things that the Lord is prompting me to say, even now, as I end this video, you know, he's saying it's time to start to line up our confession with God's words, God's promises over our lives. Line up your confession with that. You know what? I was talking to some people uh, this week and I was telling them about the fact that actually when we started uh, the church that we lead, God's Embassy Amsterdam, which has now turned into a cutting edge apostolic center, we had no idea what we were doing. But from that very first year, God gave a prophetic word. And I remember who gave it to us too, but it was an awesome word. And he said, you know, through this prophet, he said, you're pregnant with octuplets. It was the middle of the summer. And this person said, I woke up this morning and I heard Christmas carols. It was a hot summer's day. And I thought, what are they talking about? And they said, you know, it's just, just like the angels rejoiced at the birth of Christ. She said, I hear them rejoicing again, but this time because it's about the birth of this church that's going to become something awesome. We weren't feeling awesome. Believe me, we weren't. We hadn't even been able to get a space to rent. And she just said to us, you know, you are pregnant with octuplets and it's too late to ask, you know, Lord, do we really want these? It's too late to say, can we even afford this? She said, they are here. Now that word was given to us uh, in 2000 and yeah, 2008. And one day, you know, it's just, uh, I was, you know, just considering that word, contemplating it, and I didn't have a clue what those octuplets would look like. But in 2018, we and our leadership team, you know, we needed to get together. Why? Because we had been deliberating a lot, you know, about how to explain to new people coming into the church, you know, what this hodgepodge, at least at that time, it looked like a hodgepodge of foundations, ministries, businesses was. And we, as a team, a leadership team, we met, we worshiped all day, we soaked, we listened to the voice of God, but there was nothing that would help us to do that. And a half an hour before our time together ended, the Lord reminded me of that prophetic word, you know, that prophetic word that said, um, you're pregnant with octuplets. And so I went to a flip chart, took a marker, and I just drew an octogram that is a polygon with eight sides. And on each one of the eight sides, I wrote the name of one of the foundations or businesses, including the church. God's Embassy Amsterdam, the church, living in your destiny, our training foundation, car, our uh, conference arm, mandate publishing, our publishing arm, etc. And lo and behold, when I was done, there were eight entities 
on the size of the thing. And I looked at that and I thought, oh my goodness, these are the octuplets that that prophet was prophesying to us about so many years ago. The prophetic word was spoken out in 2008. We didn't actually identify those octuplets until 2018. So it was 10 years between the word being spoken out and us seeing the manifestation of it before our very eyes. Because the eighth entity had just come online about a week before we met. Why am I telling you this? It's because the Lord is saying this year in 2024, many of you are going to realize all of a sudden that what was prophesied over you, sometimes even more than a decade ago, has now come to pass, but in a totally different way than you expected. This is going to be the year of, oh, this is that which was prophesied. And so I just bless you, you know, this week. Why? Because God is saying it's going to be a year in which you see things that you've waited a long time for come to pass in Jesus' name.